The school's a law unto itself. The school is abusing currently the minds of the children and no one can say it. I'm hearing this rhetoric, the distant past, the distant past, yeah? Ampleforth has told the students everything is in the past, like some sort of new school motto, some sort of new spiritual mantra, which is emanating from the mouth of a recently exorcised demon. Here's Adam Tomlinson last week from the BBC talking to Robin Dyer, the headmaster of Ampleforth. What, what many people probably won't be able to get their head around is, is the fact that the safeguarding issues you've had at the school, they're now over 10 years ago. And that okay. just seems a heck of a long time to actually think, yes, OK, we've got an issue here. But 10 yeah. years later, you're still not meeting the standard required. I think there are different things going on here. Um, people refer to the past, and quite rightly, uh, the last case of that was in 2010. It says everything's happened in the past because it has no knowledge of anything that's happening at the moment. Ampleforth being the school it is, with the high level of academia, with the high level of intelligence, one would have thought that you'd be able to understand what an assumption is and what a fact is. Saying that all the abuse has happened in the past without knowing what's going on at the moment is turning an assumption into a fact. The abuse is in the past, not in the minds of the suffering abuse victims. Has the school forgotten about the abuse victims? Oh no, the school hasn't forgotten. Oh no, the school hasn't forgotten about the abuse victims. The school would never do that. And we know that there were dreadful things that happened in the past and our thoughts are with the survivors. The school is a moral foundation, an obelisk for morality. All Ampleforth has for the abuse victims is a sorry. Oh, we know that it happened, we're sorry, it was horrendous. This is just talk, anybody can talk. But you need to put your money where your mouth is. So what's the payout that's been coming out of Ampleforth? Well, the payouts to the victims are just ridiculously small. They don't cover the cost of a lifetime of therapy, which some of these victims need very badly. And at the same time, these schools, especially St. Benedict's in Ealing, the other elite Catholic day school, withholds the fees from the abuse victims, citing that the court cases have given out plenty of money. If you subtract the school fees from the court payout, you seem to get a very small amount of money. And I don't see why an abuse victim should have to see their parents pay money to a school that has sexually abused them. It's like almost the victim is a prostitute because the only other place on earth where people pay money to a to an establishment or to a pimp is in a whorehouse. The schools should be forced to pay back all the money to the victims. The school says the last reported sexual abuse was in 2010. Uh, the last case of that was in 2010. But the school very cleverly forgot to tell the parents that that teacher remained at the school for another six years up until 2016. The school has had four head teachers since that date, two failed ISI inspections and two failed Ofsted inspections. The headmaster of Ampleforth refers to the past. Well, the past is something quite important. Ampleforth surely should know. One of its subjects at the school should obviously be history, and history is something that we learn from in order not to repeat mistakes. It's just it seems that the Catholic Church and these elite schools rely on history to understand how to bypass laws rather than how to stop abuse. Let's look at one of the perversions that is currently ongoing at Ampleforth. It's the abuse of the pupils. They have been manipulated to think that they're a victim, that they're part of a witch hunt, which is extremely hilarious and very ironic, considering the Catholics were the ones responsible for the witch hunts. The new motto, the new mantra, it's in the past, therefore we should forget about it. Well, you know, we don't forget about the First World War, the Second World War, the Holocaust, because they give us very important things to learn. We should remember and we should look at some of the past progress of the Catholic Church, what they've managed to achieve with their destruction. The Catholics cleaned heathenism and shamanism out of Europe, and then after it had murdered them all, it apologized and said it's in the past. Then the Catholic Church had the witch hunts, which destroyed large communities, it attacked women, and it took away all our knowledge that came from plants. 
then this was put down as a past event. When the church went to the Americas, it killed, raped, and tortured the locals. It destroyed their culture, and that culture in some ways was more advanced than the European culture. After the damage had been done, and they had got them addicted to alcohol and whoring, again, this was put down to the past. You could look at the church's very dubious behavior towards the Jews and Hitler in the Second World War. But then again, we can put that down to the past and apologize. And then we can look at the children which were raped and sexually abused for decades, if not centuries. And now Mr. Dyer is saying this is in the past. And then this is supported by the students whom their colleagues in the past were raped by said people. So the students at Ampleforth have failed to read their history, which is very strange because without doing that, you can't see patterns and you can't see an emergence of a behavior. This behavior is then protected by the students who go to government to ask for their school to be kept open. A school which has participated in this type of behavior, a school which stands for this type of behavior, a school which is an expression for this type of behavior. Because we have to understand that the Catholic ideology that was responsible for these crimes in the past has been passed down through generations, through monks, through monasteries, to the modern setting. And you might say, well, things are different now. No, things are not different. The mentality at its root core is still the same. It just has to behave in different ways and it has to maneuver differently because of the new laws which have been introduced and because of the various different forms of communication which can exercise or expose behaviors which are deemed disgusting by the public. In order to be an educated person, you need to have analysis and critical analysis. And you would hope that something like Ampleforth would be able to bequeath these tools and skills to its students. However, it seems to have not done this, and I wonder why. The church is a branch of the system, just like other religions, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism. These are microcosms of the macrocosm. The church stands for something much larger. When we're looking and discussing the Catholic Church and we're exposing it and all of its misdeeds and bad conduct, what we're doing is we're actually looking at what the system has done. The Roman Catholic Church is just part of the system. The Gnostics whom the Christians killed and then said sorry and put it down to a past thing, saw evil as an inversion of God or a separation from God, a disharmony, if you like. It had things called archons. You have a school called Ampleforth that stands for education. Inversion is the key word. Inversion is the mockery that evil has for good. Inversion is what the evilness makes fun of, the goodness. You have a school called Ampleforth that stands for education, it stands for morality, yet it brainwashes the children and lies to the parents and the public and the government. The children and parents believe in the school to be correct. Then you get children to try and keep open the institution that up until four years ago was raping them and turn the children against the very people trying to protect them. The pupils think that they're victims of a specialist team of child protection officers who want to just stop their fun, which is not the case. How has the headmaster of Ampleforth managed to confuse these children into thinking that their fun has been taken away and they're victims? Up until four years ago, these kids were being raped. That is an inversion. That is what a paedophile would do. A paedophile believes that a child wants to have sex. Now, if you can get hundreds of children to want to keep a school open that has raped children, then that is paedophile thinking. Can you see the perversion and the inversion going on? Can you see the current abuse happening in a different form? Can you see the manipulation of the mind the children are having? It mocks them, it abuses them. And this is something that the energy or the intelligence of paedophilia would do.